in this video we are going to solve at excel exam chemistry from may 2024 let's start so question number 1 it says that the box gives the names of some substances complete the table by choosing a substance from the box that matches each description each substance may be used once more than once or not at all first one they are saying good conductor of electricity of course it's a metal so you can choose lithium from the box element which is liquid at room temperature that's bromine a substance that can be used to make polymer that's ethene it could be any alkene and it should have carbon carbon double bond the famous one is ethene which makes polyethene an element that forms basic oxide basic oxides are made by metals and acidic oxides are made by non metals so it's lithium of course it's a metal a substance that has a giant covalent structure as you have learned three giant covalent structures diamond graphite and silica or silicon dioxide so here the answer is diamond describe a test for chlorine for chlorine it can bleach out the damp litmus paper here you can see in this picture Question number two. This question is about the reactivities of metals. The table shows the reaction of four metals, P, Q, R, and S, with water and with dilute hydrochloric acid. The letters are not the symbols of elements. Here they are showing you P, Q, R, and S. P is giving no reaction with water and no reaction with dilute HCl. It means it's least reactive element. So here we will put here. um as least reactive element and then comes here q q is very fast with water and its reaction with dilute hcl is not even done because it's very dangerous so it's most reactive let's put it here as more reactive most reactive and then r gives no reaction with water and slow reaction with hcl s gives slow reaction with water and fast reaction with hcl that's why we have got a complete idea of the order of reactivity series as you know here s is more reactive than r so we have done it here like that in this order give the letter of metal that could be zinc in this reactivity series you can see here zinc is less reactive than sodium calcium magnesium and aluminum so zinc could be r which is giving no reaction with water and it gives slow reaction with hcl give a word equation if the question says word equation it means you have to give the word equation don't write then the uh, chemical equation between aluminum and hydrochloric acid metal with uh, whenever the metal reacts with any acid it gives you salt and hydrogen gas so aluminum plus hydrochloric acid it gives you aluminum chloride salt and hydrogen gas give the name of metal that could be p p is least reactive metal and in the reactivity series as you know the least reactive metals which are below hydrogen could be copper silver gold platinum you can give the name of any of these metals give a reason why the reaction of q with dilute hydrochloric acid is not done this reaction could be explosive it could be dangerous it could be violent or unsafe the diagram shows the apparatus used to demonstrate the reaction between aluminum and iron 3 oxide when the magnesium fuse is lit a very exothermic reaction occurs this is the equation for the reaction what is meant by the term exothermic exo mean out thermic mean thermal energy any heat energy in this reaction heat energy is given out or released to the surrounding state why aluminum displaces iron because aluminum is more reactive than iron we can see this in the reactivity series also this is aluminum which is more reactive than iron and as you know this is a displacement reaction explain why this reaction is a redox reaction as you see here 
aluminum in this equation is gaining oxygen so it's getting oxidized and iron oxide is losing oxygen so it's getting reduced that's why aluminum gains oxygen so it is oxidized iron three oxide loses oxygen so it is reduced the diagram represents an atom of element z is not the symbol of element give the number of group to which element z belongs number of group you can identify by number of outer electrons it has two electrons so it's from group two give the number of period to which element z belongs number of period you can determine by number of shells it has three shells one two three so of course it's period three give the formula of the compound that forms when z reacts with fluorine you can see here z has two electrons in the outer shell it means it is coming from group 2 and it will make positive 2 valency. Fluorine is having negative 1 valency. And when we will do the crossover, it will give you ZF2, this formula. One mole of Z contains this much atoms, which is Avogadro constant. Calculate the number of electrons in one mole of atoms of element Z. Give your answers in standard form. Here you can see counted the number of electrons in Z. So there are 2, 8, 2, which is, it means it's 12. So there are 12 electrons. And then we will see the number of electrons in one mole. Number of electrons in one mole, one mole will be 12 times, 6 times, there is a power 23. You will get the answer. See, a sample of element Z contains three isotopes. The table shows the numbers of particles in the nucleus of each isotope and the percentage abundance of each isotope. Use information in the table to calculate the AR of element Z. Give your answer to one decimal place. Make sure to follow these instructions. Here, um, how we find AR? We have to multiply mass number of each element with its percentage abundance. So first element, its mass number is 12 plus 12, 24 times 79 plus second isotope, 13 plus 13 plus 12 is 25 multiply with 10. The third isotope has 12 plus 14, 26 multiplied with 11. We divide all these values by 100 and then we will get the AR, relative atomic mass of this element up to one decimal place, so 24.3. Reduce the name of element Z, check periodic table for AR. You will find this 24 is the relative atomic mass of magnesium. So that's the answer. Question number four. Caffeine is a stimulant found in coffee, tea, and some soft drinks. Molecular formula here they have given C8H10N4O2. Determine the number of atoms in one molecule of caffeine. So just count the total number of atoms, 8, 10, 4, and 2, and you will get the answer. Calculate the relative formula mass, MR, of caffeine. How to do it? Carbon is 8 times, plus hydrogen is 10 times. Nitrogen is 4 times, and oxygen is 2 times. Multiply their atomic masses with their numbers so 12 is atomic mass of carbon hydrogen 1 14 is nitrogen atomic mass and 16 is atomic mass for oxygen multiply these values with the number of atoms and then you will get the relative molecular mass find the empirical for give the empirical formula for caffeine how you get the empirical formula you have to take the simplest whole number ratio so carbon is 8, hydrogen is 10, nitrogen is 4, and oxygen is 2. If we divide all these values by the smallest value, that is 2, you will get the answer. Ethanol can be obtained from solution of caffeine in the ethanol using this apparatus. Give the name of the method of separation shown in the diagram. As you know here, in this picture, you don't find any glass beads or any fractionating column. It's a simple distillation technique which works on boiling and then condensation. Describe what happens to the ethanol vapor in 
apparatus X here it is used for cooling purpose so that it can convert the gas or vapors into the liquid calcium bromide is an ionic compound the table shows the formula and melting points of caffeine and calcium bromide the relative formula mass of calcium bromide is similar to the relative formula mass of caffeine explain why calcium bromide has much higher melting point than caffeine the reason is that the caffeine is a covalent molecule and calcium bromide is ionic compound calcium bromide is a giant ionic lattice or structure it has many strong electrostatic forces of attraction between oppositely charged ions it's a very strong bond caffeine has a simple molecular structure with weak intermolecular forces and then you have to make comparison more energy is required to break the electrostatic forces of attraction in calcium bromide than to overcome the intermolecular forces in caffeine question number 5 a student uses paper chromatography in an experiment to separate the dyes in four different felt tip pens e f g and h the diagram shows the appearance of paper before and after the experiment this is before and after it is done it is called chromatogram the chromatographic paper is placed in a solvent explain why the spots on the baseline are placed above the level of the solvent the reason is that it should not be dissolved into the solvent so that they will not dissolve in the solvent and so that the dyes can travel up the paper explain which two felt tip pens contain the same dye you have to see the uh, the common spots found in all of these um, substances so here we find the common spots here and here which means e and h are having common spots e and h both have spots at the same level the student thought that both f and g contain only one dye if we find them g is containing only one dye yes and f it did not even move any distance so we cannot be sure about this because this is it means that we have to change the solvent for this one it is not soluble in the given solvent the student can only be certain about g containing one dye as only one spot as f is insoluble or not moved up so you cannot tell how many dyes it has calculate the rf value for the dye in g show you working here you have to use ruler or scale and measure the distance traveled by solvent front this is the solvent front till the baseline okay and also measure the spot the one they said is g this spot measure the distance till baseline and then you have to use the formula distance traveled by spot divided by distance traveled by solvent so it's 39 mm divided by 65 and you will get the rf value if you have any question you can ask in the comments thank you so much for watching goodbye and take care